So this week's episode of The Ancient Magus' Bride, we take a very different approach from the past few episodes, not doing anything really overly dramatic, minus one moment in the episode with the whole bedroom scene and Elias being more or less like a serpent-like beast, but for the most part, this was actually a pretty much down-to-earth episode. Nothing too extraordinary, there was some fairies and things like that, but it was a very nice, almost like slice-of-life style episode, but it did a lot of really showing more into Chisei's mentality and really showing us that she is so much different than where she was in episode 1. Episode 1, she just felt like an object that was being sold around for obvious reasons. Compared to where she is now, she's kind of opening up and she's understanding a bit more about herself, and I think it helps a lot when you have a character like Ruth, who is literally her best friend, almost like a big brother to her, and also they share literally everything from emotions to memories to even the magic flowing through her veins, pretty much. So it makes sense, and it just makes it even more impressive of a series because you have now someone who can support her and give her the advice that she probably needs. But on the opposite end of good advice, you also have the one character who I forget her name, but essentially the character who kind of threw it in Chisei's face, obviously not in a harmful way, but she was just trying to help her by saying that the way she's acting, trying to be dependent on Elias, isn't healthy, and Chisei kind of snaps for a moment and then immediately apologizes, which, of course, a lot of people can agree that her attachment and the way she wants to be with Elias is unhealthy, she should be able to function by herself, but of course she could still also love Elias and want to be around him, but she kind of feels like she doesn't deserve to love anyone because she feels like, well, I only think about myself, I don't have the ability to do that, but you can tell she's starting to understand herself a bit more. I really like that scene where she snaps on the girl because essentially, even if it was completely true, which I agree with what she was saying, when you have someone who's been through as much as her and the one person who did save her, Having that thrown in your face when she's already so confused with all of her emotions, especially all these new emotions, one she didn't even know she had because her mother never wanted her, her family never wanted her. So to see her snap, that is such a believable reaction, and it's so Chisei's to immediately realize what she did and try to apologize and make up for it. That's kind of what this episode was. It was really just showing where Chisei is currently compared to where she was just eight weeks back. And they've done such a phenomenal job at pacing her character, building her up to what she is, and going forward, I know it's only ever going to get better, and I think because we have a character like Ruth, who's always going to be by her side, man's best friend, a literally big brother relationship, it's so perfect what they've been building up to, and to see where the show could go from here, I can only guess we're obviously going to have some pretty impressive moments, but these downtime episodes where it does show a lot into the character's mentality, but even if it doesn't necessarily progress the plot forward, it's still so impressive with what they're able to do with the atmosphere and things around all of these characters. I have to say, especially like just seeing this kind of one-off old man character who I expect we might see one or two more times throughout this series, maybe being like almost like a pal to Chisei, and this kind of like vampire fairy kind of attached to him. And we get to learn that their species, they pretty much feed on people. They suck their blood and in return, they pretty much make them almost super out of skill. Like they could be a phenomenal writer or a great mechanic, something like that. But this vampire never actually has been sucking on the old man's blood. If she did, the old man would die. But it's pretty interesting how it almost happened like when he was in his youth or his like young adult years. Essentially, for whatever reason, he could see her for a moment and that translated into a book. And you could tell kind of like the romance that was building. It's almost like transcending species in a lot of ways. And I found that to be pretty interesting that they just kind of sprinkled it in, which I think it helped with what Chisei is going through with her own confusion of what love is and things like that. I thought it just bounced around quite well. Pretty interesting because I actually thought they were going to just kind of brush aside because last week the episode ends with like Elise's back kind of like squirming and looking off. I thought they were just using that as like a red herring, like they're just trying to make us want to watch the next week's episode. But we can see that transformation definitely screwed his body over, like he's not even able to control what his body is as seen by the beast that he turned into into his room there and I thought it was interesting to see that it took him so much time to basically regain control like even when he lost control in the bedroom he didn't kill Chisei but based on the fact that she was sleeping he almost did eat her so I think that definitely the reason he was separating himself from people was justified because if not he might have lashed out in a way that he shouldn't have but I really like Chisei at the end of the episode kind of calling out Elias no longer just being okay with kind of brushing aside questions as long as she can be by Elias's side that's fine no she's starting to feel like someone who is developing love for Elias and wants to be something more than just his object that he can use and I think Elias is starting to see that too and I think it's going to be interesting to see how the relationship is going to go forward 
because I think their relationship is going to be very magical by the end, depending on how much we get to see within this anime. It is a two core, luckily, but still, it's nice to see Chise stand up and see how much she is developing. I don't think her development is coming too fast. I actually think they're taking it at a very believable rate, even though we're in a magical series. What happened to her in the past, translating to how she is now, I think it's really interesting, and I just love Ruth as a character. Definitely best boy in the series right now. And just overall, it's just a fun series. It can be relaxing, but I think the character writing is so on point, especially with how much detail is in this world. It's just phenomenal. It's magical. The soundtrack always gets me going, and I can't wait to see more of The Land of the Dragons next week. That's a surprise. But let me know your thoughts. What did you think of Episode 9, and how excited are you for Episode 10 next week? Let me know. And before you leave, smack that like button to share your support. If you need to, be sure to subscribe. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.